Squad. This is Monica. I'm coming at you today to answer a few questions from one of my sparkly students. So I wanted to talk about the differences in the wire diameters, the types of wire that, that you have available. I mean, it runs the gamut, but there's also variations in the diameter, not just the amount of strands. For the bead stringing wire, we're going to talk a little bit about the differences in the amount of strands that are available to us, the, the typical ones. Now, there is a difference in the amount of strands in the wire as well as the actual size of each strand and overall circumference or diameter of whatever size and amount of strands that you're purchasing. So I have the, the typical lineup here of three different sizes in the strand count for bead stringing wire. There is actually a fourth if you are over in the European countries or if you special order it. It is a 21 strand but I don't typically use that. The 7, the 19, and the 40 strand are usually what you have in your big box craft stores as well as what you can order online. We're going to start out with the basic which is the seven strands of bead stringing wire. This means that there are seven strands compressed together. It's more economical. You get more on the spool and is great for all different types of jewelry. It will tend to kink on you if you're kind of rough with your jewelry like you do. Pull off your jewelry and, and wad it up and and everything maybe throw it in the bottom of your purse as far as the tension this piece is a little bit different because we are going from two sides of the necklace down into one for a drop pendant just because of this little fork in the road right here that, that we've got but I wanted to show you the difference in this larger 12 millimeter bead versus the 10 millimeter bead that I have up here. And then we have spacers in between each of these beads. So if I wanted to ball this up, see how I can't really do that? Like if I were to throw this in my purse, it wouldn't ball up as easily because there's so much tension in these larger beads here. Meaning that it's not as flexible as my other necklace here where I can completely just wad this up but see how it just very easily folds up. It's got a lot more flexibility to the piece and it, it can bend without breaking. So that's just a basic strand, strand count and it's also very good for your beginners because you get a lot of it should you make mistakes, which when you're very first starting out in jewelry making, you will make mistakes. So it's good to have extra and it's basic and it's not as expensive. Mid-level bead stringing wire is the 19 strands. That means that there are 19 strands of wire that are compacted together or compressed together and coated. In a nylon coating typically is what's used. It gives you a little bit more strength flexibility and it is a little bit better quality. There is a little bit higher price point on it being the mid-grade and there is less typically on the spool. And then we move up to the 49 strands. Now this is your elite or your maximum in your strands. The 49 strands are compressed together and coated just like the others this gives you a lot of flexibility and a little bit more luxurious feel to your piece overall. It is a lot more expensive. You get a lot less on the spools. If you are designing these pieces for others, I would suggest maybe going to the 19 is the mid-grade and doing the 49 strand for your, maybe if you're doing precious stones. If you're doing semi-precious or you just want a higher quality without worrying about uh, any kind of kinking up, use the 19. And if you're not worried about any of that or if you're just a beginner, use the 7 strands. That is just the difference in the strand count on each spool that I talked about. Let's go a little bit deeper. We're going to talk a little bit about the difference in the actual diameters even though these are all seven strand spools of bead stringing wire. Okay, so you notice here there's some information on the front of these spools. Now, this is the smallest size that I have diameter in the bead stringing wire. Now when I unwrap this, you can see it's just a standard, it's not thread, it is actual metal. So these are the seven strands that have been compressed and they are a small diameter, meaning that if I had this really small seed bead here with this teeny tiny hole, I could fit this strand into that bead with no problem. 
So as we increase bead size or the bead hole even, I put that wire in there. See how much space there is? How much wiggle room? This is the smaller wire. So a good rule of thumb when you're beading is the larger the bead hole, the larger you can go on the strand that you're using. On the smallest spool of seven strand wire, being that the, di the diameter is 0.12 inches or 0 0.30 millimeters, you could go up in diameter to the next spool if you wanted to, which for me is a 0 0.15 inch or 0 0.38 millimeter and you can see that this one has a little bit more of a diameter to it which means when you go to put that into the bead it's going to take up more of that bead hole and there'll be less wiggle room with inside the bead so we can still yet keep continuing to go up and stay in the seven strands of wire but we're just increasing in our diameter so right here this is a 0 0.18 inch or 0 0.46 millimeter so we have the smallest on the bottom which is the 0 0.12 we have the medium which is 0 0.15 and then we have the largest which is the 0 0.18 there at the top now that's just in these spools that I have here. Again, these are all seven strands of wire. They're just different in the diameter. When you talk about, well, how much, how much uh, diameter do I need to fill up my beads? That's a personal choice. I mean, here I've got this large bead. It's got a hole. This is a, uh, I believe this is a two millimeter hole and I can put my smallest seven strand wire in there with a lot of space. I can continue with the next size. Okay, this is the .15. I still have a lot of wiggle room in there, which is still okay because it's gonna hold the weight. Then I've got the 0 0.18 and it fills up quite a bit there. It's about a half of a millimeter if you want to look at this is a two millimeter hole and this is almost a half a millimeter filling up the hole. You are not going to want to put a two millimeter size wire trying to get it into your two millimeter hole to take up all the space because that won't fit. You could go on up to the uh, the biggest diameter which is almost one millimeter that is going to be your 0 0.036 inch or a 0 0.091 millimeter this one is a 49 strand roll but I'm just showing you in general disregard the amount of strands how it goes up in inches as far as your diameters on the differences in the diameter for each type of wire that you have Now, what I typically will do is use 15 in all of my jewelry, no matter if I'm using the seven strands, the 19 strands, or the 49 strands spools, I typically go for the middle of the road because that's usually one, what is most economical for me as well as available in the big box craft stores. This 15 will be strong enough to hold larger beads such as this 12 millimeter glass bead and it will also be able to take of course the smaller beads that I if you want any of the sizes past the 0 0.18 you typically have to order that online again this seven strands in the 0 0.15 inches is my go-to this will fit into your one your number one size crimp bead you can see that kind of looks like a little round bead it will also go into up to your number two size crimp tube. That is your size two crimp tube. And that is also my standard size crimp tube that I always use. Now, if I go down to a size one crimp tube, it's because it's a very, very thin, like this 0 0.12 wire that I'm using. See how thin that is? That would go in the 
size one crimp tube and I will use that number two because it holds the small wire on up to the larger wire I can also get up to sometimes even four wires if I'm doing a multi strand bracelet or necklace through this number two size without having then to go up to the size three and the size four crimp tubes because those are huge crimp tubes and I typically don't ever even have to use those Now where you could use that size three and four crimp tube is if you had the 19 strand or the 49 strand wires and maybe you had the, the ultra thick diameter. So maybe you, you go past the 0.18 diameter and you're all up in these larger sizes here but you're also then using the 49 strand wires. This that I have here on this 49 strand is a 0.024 which is a 0.61 millimeter and you can see how much more thick it is even than the thickest seven strand that I had available over here at the 0 0.18 now if I wanted to use this 49 strand it gives me a lot more flexibility see how it it, it can be kind of twisted up and it doesn't kink up whereas if I use this over here the um, 0.12 seven strand wire and I twisted it it's going to maintain the twist shapes if I pinch it. This is a 49 strand bead stringing wire, but it's in the 0 0.24 inch or 0 0.061 millimeter. It takes up more of that hole. The more that you fill up that hole, the more tension is going to be in your piece. So you might have that issue where you have a stiffness in your piece. If you prefer to use the 49 strand wires in all of your jewelry making, then you want to really pay close attention to the diameters here because of the filling up of your bead holes and if you work in larger beads and things that will handle the weight of your piece overall beautifully however let's say you are trying to use tiny beads like seed beads here well there's no real weight to a seed bead if I were to try to put this big huge 49 strand at 0 0.24 inches through these seed beads it's going to cause a massive amount of tension there's no real point to using that large of a diameter much less that amount of strands in that light of a bead keep in mind it's not just about the number of strands in your bead stringing wire whether it be seven strands 19 strands 21 strands or the 49 strands that does have a play as far as the flexibility and the quality of your uh, your structure of your piece as far as are you using little beads that don't require um, you know a lot of strength are you using mid to chunky size beads which are going to be a very weighty piece are you going to have a large pendant which is going to be pulling at a certain angle on the piece do you want to use the more economical seven strands get more on the spool then you got to think okay well what diameter of wire do I typically always need the seven strand for me it's more economical I get more on the spool being that it's a hundred feet and this 0 0.15 is the middle of the road for the typical sizes that you see in your big box stores so I typically can always use this no matter what size my beads are I use that in the earrings here that I did and it fits through the little tiny seed beads as well as the mid to small size beads that are in my necklace and bracelet so you can see that is not kinking up there's no uh, big huge amount of tension I can put this any which way I want to in my hands and not have any problems with it it holds the weight of the necklace just fine so that to me is your best bet as far as the type of wire the diameter of wire and the number of strands of wire you're going to get more skilled as you go along and you're going to become more knowledgeable as you get more experience in my opinion nothing is wrong uh, you you can always test see what works out for you what you like best practice makes perfect on the crimping element of this that is probably the the biggest piece to having too much tension or uh, too much slack in your jewelry designs that would be my number one tip is to keep on practicing how you crimp 
you guys have any questions like this, feel free to leave that in the comments and I may make a video on that topic. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to leave me a like on this video, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate you sharing this video if you find it useful. And have a sparkle day, y'all. Bye!